we will have testimony now um, and Frank will introduce our next speaker. All right, thanks Rachel. Thank you, Carly. Uh, Bruce Gagna is the coordinator of the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. He's been working on space issues since 1982. He's the Vietnam War era veteran and he's a member of Veteran for Peace and he's a great, a great guy. Bruce Gagnon. Thank you, Frank. Great to be with everyone. I want to uh, thank Chris for his words about Ronald Reagan. It reminds me of a story that in the early 80s, I was living in Orlando, Florida, and Reagan came to make his famous Russia evil people speech at a big hotel. And I organized a protest outside of that speech. In that uh, particular speech, Reagan said that Russia was the epitome of evil in the world. And it reminds me of what Biden said just in the last few days that Vladimir Putin had no soul. And so it really, I think, underscores dramatically how things haven't changed that much, if any at all, in, in regard to the US demonization of Russia. I wanna start talking about space, uh, taking us back to World War II at the time of the end of the war, when the US uh, military created a secret program called Operation Paperclip and smuggled 1,500 top Nazi op operatives, uh, Hitler's uh, uh, generals and scientists and all different kinds of people, uh, intelligence people uh, to the US. And they, throughout the military industrial complex, these Nazis were seeded. And a hundred of these people were uh, Werner von Braun and the rocket team that created the V1 and V2 rockets that Hitler used to terrorize the cities of London and Paris and Brussels near the end of World War II. One of these people that came along with von Braun was Major General Walter Dornberger, who was Hitler's liaison uh, to the rocket team. So his job was to make sure that von Braun had everything he needed, and he reported back to Hitler on the progress of this rocket operation. And so when they came to the US, they brought 100 copies of the V-2 rocket to Huntsville, Alabama, to the Army's Redstone Arsenal to begin working on creating the US space program. And Major uh, General Walter Dornberger, Hitler's liaison, became vice president of Bell Aerospace in New York. Uh, in the 1950s, Dornberger testified before the Congress of the United States, where he said, gentlemen, I didn't come to this country to lose the Third World War. I lost two already. And he went on to lay out his vision for the future with orbiting battle stations in space that would be used to determine who could get on and off the planet Earth. I call it the Nazi prophecy. Well, in the uh, late uh, 1990s, the US Space Command created this document called Vision for 2020. And in here, they talked about how the United States would control space, dominate space, and deny other nations access to space when necessary. And in fact, at the Space Command headquarters in Colorado Springs, at Peterson Air Force Base, above their doorway, the logo Master of Space is emblazoned there, something that they wear uh, as a patch on their uniform as well. So this is the, I would say, Nazi prophecy that's come to fruition in the current moment. Uh, earlier, Alice Slater mentioned uh, the ABM Treaty, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, that George W. Bush pulled out of in 2002. This kept the mutually assured destruction mad, sort of uh, in, in, a, in a kind of weird way. It, it, uh, mad created some stability because neither side had a, a real advantage over the other. There was this rough equivalency between nuclear forces. The ABM treaty blocked this idea of having a shield to be used after you launched a first strike attack on another country. 
But after the uh, U.S. withdrawal of the ABM Treaty uh, during the Bush administration and then following during the Obama administration, the uh, uh, missile defense systems went on steroids being uh, tested and deployed encircling both Russia and China. And it was during that period, uh, during, especially during the Obama administration, where Russia and China kept repeatedly saying very publicly that we really get rid of our nuclear retaliatory capability because of uh, the uh, withdrawal from the ABM treaty. And now the deployments of these missile defense uh, forces, which are the shield to be used after a US first strike attack. It's important to remember that Russia and China have uh, long ago renounced first strike while the US refuses to do so, saying that we have to keep all options on the table. Today, uh, the United States has created a, a missile defense launch facility in Romania, and they're building one in Poland right now. They will be able to launch these interceptors, the shield, after a US first strike attack. And at the same time, these launch platforms have the capability to fire first strike, first strike attack Tomahawk cruise missiles, which are nuclear capable. And they would be able to reach Moscow in 10 minutes time from Romania and Poland. You've read nothing about this in the American media. I wonder why. But if Russia was to try to do something like this or China was to try to do something like this by putting similar capabilities in Mexico or Canada, the United States would go ballistic. Uh, at the end of the uh, Soviet Union, at the time of its collapse in 1991, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, Daddy Bush, was president, and his Secretary of State, uh, Jim Baker, promised Gorbachev that, that NATO would not expand one inch towards the Russian borders. And this was the agreement that was necessary to get Russia to agree to a unified Germany, both East and West Germany, coming back together again. But then when Clinton became president, he violated that promise and began uh, a major NATO expansion program that today is on steroids. And the uh, US and NATO are pressing right up against literally the Russian border. Now trying to get into Belarus, trying to get into Ukraine, trying to get into Georgia as well. In fact, NATO is going global as an alliance they're now setting up partnerships with countries, particularly in the Asia Pacific and in Latin America. And the idea is that NATO wants to replace the United Nations as the foremost international organization. Why? It was because at the, uh, at the UN Security Council, both Russia and China have the ability to veto resolutions brought by the US and NATO to declare war on particular countries. And so by creating an alternative alliance, which would be this expanded international NATO, uh, the United States would then be able to say, we have the backing of the world to go in and do these particular invasions in XYZ country. Recently, you all know that uh, during the Trump administration, Space Force was created. It's important to remember that at the time of this vote in the Congress, to authorize, to create the law, to create Space Force. The Democrats controlled the House of Representatives and could have blocked, could have killed Space Force right then and there. But the only thing the Democrats asked for was to instead call it the Space Corps rather than Space Force, making the name just a little more benign, a little nicer sounding. Uh, but that wasn't even passed. And so today we've got to ask, what is the mission? What is the job of the Space Force? And I would say it's two fundamental things. One is to give corporate capitalism control of the planet Earth. We know that with all space technology that exists today and the ground stations around the world that enable and, and uh, uh, beam on the satellites from uh, orbiting uh, military satellites, uh, they beam the messages, the signals in real time, split second time. The Pentagon is able to see everything on the earth 
it, it, they're able to hear everything on the earth by intercepting all phone facts and email communications and ultimately target everything on the earth. So this document, Vision for 2020, talks about if we have control and domination of space, we will be able to win all the wars on planet Earth. So that's one job of the Space Force, is to put that in motion, is to create the technologies to make it possible. But secondly, there's another job, and that is to control what's called the Earth-Moon gravity well. Think of a wishing well. Imagine someone is down inside the bottom of a well and you're at the top. You have the advantage because of gravity. You can determine really whether they get out of that well or not. Well, it's the same way getting off the planet Earth. There's an Earth-Moon gravity well. And one of the things that Major General Walter Dornberger was talking about, the former Nazi, uh, when he talked to the Congress in the 1950s, when he said, we need to have orbiting battle stations, he was talking about placing them at the top of the Earth-Moon gravity well so that the United States would be able to control which countries could go on and off the planet Earth. So today, as the United States, uh, during the Obama administration, passed a new law saying that uh, American individuals, American corporations can make land claims, can claim ownership of various planetary bodies, which would violate the UN's Outer Space Treaty and the, uh, and the Moon Treaty that say the, the planetary bodies are the province of all humankind. So the, now it's getting possible with technology development to be able to go out and mine the sky. And so we're seeing this privatization now of launch, uh, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, all kinds of other uh, private launch companies uh, now uh, getting contracts from the U.S. to launch military satellites and, and this whole 5G explosion. They want to put uh, tens of thousands of satellites into space uh, orbiting the planet. So every single human being on the planet 24-7 would have a 5G satellite over their head. Uh, enabling them to uh, use these 5G systems that the Pentagon is saying are going to be instrumental in, in helping them develop major new weapon systems because of the speed of 5G. So 5G is really a military uh, operation. But anyway, this idea of mining the sky now is becoming quite popular. And so I think this is one of the drivers then of this goal to control the pathway on and off the planet to determine which country, which corporation, which individuals can go out and mine the heavens. And at the same time, the nuclear industry views space as a new market. They want to have nuclear powered mining colonies on the moon and Mars and other planetary bodies. And they want to have nuclear reactors on board rockets, cutting in half the amount of time it takes to get to Mars. Recently, I found out about a RAND Corporation study. You remember the RAND Corporation that uh, where uh, our friend Daniel Ellsberg was working during the Vietnam War, helping to write the government's secret history of the Vietnam War. He bravely smuggled out the, the, uh, the, this Pentagon Papers uh, to the New York Times and other newspapers around the country, broke the story open. Well, that was the RAND Corporation. But today they have a new study calling for the breakup or the balkanization of Russia into smaller constituent countries so that the oil corporations, the fossil fuel and resource extraction corporations would have a better job of controlling the Arctic region. Because of climate crisis and the melting of the Arctic ice, it's now going to be possible to drill, baby, drill in the Arctic. And these Western corporations look at a map and they see that Russia has the largest land border of any country on the planet with the Arctic. And so this must be changed. Thus, this RAND Corporation study. And thus, these current moves by US and NATO to have war games up in the Nordic region right along the Russian border and Finland and Norway, Sweden and Denmark, all these particular parts of the world now are having uh, these war games. And the US is storing equipment 
in Norway, military hardware, after these war games are over, they're stored at a weapons hub in Norway and also one in Poland as the war games are held in, the, in that part of Eastern Europe near the Russian border. They're storing these weapon systems in Poland for eventual use. So it's very clear to me that one of the major reasons for this constant demonization of Russia is to prepare the American people and the people throughout the West for this breakup, this balkanization of Russia so that the weapons corporations uh, can uh, take control uh, so that the oil corporations, resource extraction corporations can take control of the planet so that Wall Street will benefit from this uh, unipolar control of the planet. Right now with Russia and China and Iran and uh, Venezuela and Brazil and many other countries around the world rising, becoming competitors to the US global unipolar empire, the United States is desperate and freaking out and desperate people do desperate things. And so I think the US is as much a danger to the world as it's ever been, as it tries now to hang on to its place as this unipolar power, this unipolar empire of the world. And so I uh, wanna really underscore and really thank Norman Solomon for his words, speaking directly to the peace movement here today saying, stop buying this Russia demonization, this China demonization. Can't you see what the real agenda is? Don't believe it, don't follow it and speak out against it. Uh, and uh, thank you all very much for listening. Good luck to everybody. Thank you.